What's up guys? So what's a knockout or how does a knockout occur in combat sports and even in other sports? What a knockout really is, it's a concussion or a series of concussions that really shuts down the brain. For an example, in boxing or MMA or other combat sports, a blow to the jaw, right? Most trainers will teach their fighters to target the jaw of the opponent. And the reason for this is it's an easy way to get a knockout because of the anatomy of the jaw. The way it's shaped, it's almost like a lever. So when you hit the jaw, the neck and the head rotates very quickly, rapidly. And what that does is it causes the brain to whiplash in the head and it causes it to smack into the skull of the head. And usually this will cause a concussion or a series of concussions. In the trauma, when the brain smacks into the skull, it causes the brain to stimulate a lot of neurotransmitters and it overrides the nervous system. And this causes a temporary paralysis on the body, which means pretty much the body will shut down. It'll be quote unquote paralyzed temporarily, as the name suggests. Before the temporary paralysis, what happens to the body is the body's full of electrolytes, right? Which are responsible for impulses in the body. And what happens is when your brain gets damaged, when you take blows to the head, for instance, the blow causes a destabilization of the electrolytes in the body and it causes an imbalance. And the brain will try to keep that balance as much as it can, but repeated blows to the head will make it that much harder for the brain to keep the balance. And when the damage gets so far, the brain shuts down so then the body can repair itself. So why does the brain shut down? It's because when someone takes a blow to the head, the neurotransmitters are are firing chaotically out of control right and it's overriding the nervous system and what the brain is trying to do is trying to shut down so it can restore the balance of the neurotransmitters and also the electrolytes and the neurons and then there's another important factor for the fluids around the brain and also the membranes between the brain and the skull these membranes are called meninges there's three layers of meninges they're called the pia matter which is against the brain. There's the arachnoid, which is in the middle. And then there's the dura matter, which is against the skull. And in between these membranes are fluids, such as the cerebrospinal fluid. And these fluids and membranes, they provide cushion for the brain in case it hits the skull. And that's why when you see boxers or MMA fighters who are fighting later in their careers, they've had so many wars, they sparred so hard throughout their career, they get knocked out so easily. When they were younger, they used to be able to take shots very well. But then when you see them get older, they can't take the same blows to the head as when they were younger in their careers. And this is because when you get hit in the head repeatedly for many years, the brain becomes so damaged from previous concussions, it becomes weaker to impact. It becomes more susceptible to shutting down the body due to previous concussions. And also the meninges and the fluid can also tear apart. When the brain keeps moving around in the skull at rapid speed and it starts to tear away on the meninges. And when this occurs, the fluid slash the cushion for the brain, it's going to be that much weaker and thinner because of the tear that it's had throughout years and years of repeated blows to the head. And now there's not too much cushion for the brain. So now the brain is going to smack the inside of the skull that much faster and harder. Although the tearing of the meninges and the fluid around the brain isn't as common, it usually happens when there's more severe head trauma, more serious blows to the head. Some bigger shots to the head can cause it. Although the meninges and the fluids can repair and heal itself, fighters usually, after they've been knocked out, a lot of fighters tend to go back to sparring really quickly and start getting hit in the head again. So this is not allowing the healing process to continue. So in conclusion, here are the steps to a knockout. Okay, for an example, a boxer takes a stance, fires a shot to the jaw. Now the head and the neck will rotate really quickly. This will cause the brain to whiplash and smack into the walls of the skull. And the fluids around the brain, the meninges are gonna cause some kind of cushion. But now what happens when the brain does hit the walls of the skull, well now this creates a concussion. And the neurotransmitters which send signals from the brain to the body, they start going out of control and they start overriding the nervous system. The electrolytes become unbalanced, they become destabilized. Now the brain shuts down because because now it wants to restore the balance of the neurotransmitters and also the electrolytes. It wants to repair the body in time and recover. So that's really what causes a knockout, what a knockout really is, some of the science behind it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys can teach me something that I probably don't know about this. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.